Well, I'm glad you had some enjoyment with that. I have no transition to our uh, final review of the night. The classic movie, question mark, question mark, New <laughs> yeah. Jack City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to, this was my idea. Uh, we were last week looking for a classic movie to dredge up, and this was on Paramount Plus. And uh, there is a current news story that's been going around about a mayor from a uh, town in Illinois named Tiffany Henyard, a.k.a. the super mayor. Um, if you want to find out about the long and twisted history of her uh, mayorship, uh, she uh, you can look up the YouTube channel Nate the Lawyer, who has uh, a lot of videos talking about it. But uh, one of the signs that there might have been some issues with uh, this particular person when she became mayor was, uh, and, and Ninja knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she showed up dressed as Wesley Snipes' character from this movie while playing the Rihanna song blurring. Now, where's my money? Money. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me what you owe. And it's like, huh. Yeah. So I was kind of curious about the, this uh movie just to see what inspired her because i didn't know that yeah you know, I, I didn't know anything about this movie I, as far as i knew wesley snipes was like an undercover cop or something like, yeah no, no he is not he is an awful person and it, it'd be like if joe biden walked out on stage you know like my favorite like my, like my moral advisor uh, or you know <laughs> i was inspired to get into politics by that palpatine fella like the cut of his jib <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Like it, it's on the same level of like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. But uh, this is this movie is interesting because it has a very particular tone to it. Mm -hmm. It's like there's not a shred of irony in the entire runtime. No, there is not. Yeah. There, there's humor. There's some over the top scenes, but you get the feeling that like the movie takes itself seriously, which is actually kind of appropriate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, um, so basically, the, the the plot of the movie um, uh, we we have our we have our crime lord uh, uh, Nino Brown. That's you know Wesley Snipes, and he's uh, basically. <clears throat> As it's told in this movie, now this is, this isn't true. This is not how it happened. But um, he's kind of in the ground uh, at the ground floor of the um, uh, crack cocaine epidemic in New York back in the uh, mid to late '80s. Which, um, if you know anything about the history with New York, with or even LA with crack cocaine, it was bad. Yeah, because what happened is suddenly you took a. Uh, designer drug like a high class drug and you managed to water it down to uh the level where anybody could afford it mm -hmm. yeah and uh and as anyone would as you might expect it's highly addictive yeah uh so let's see was, it, was, it, was there any other oh yeah by the way this like daniel was mentioning uh it's interesting that this movie felt the need to say that this was a fictional story at the end of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it did actually seem pretty plausible the whole way along. And like you, Daniel said, it was playing on real life incidents. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and so uh, what happens is Nino takes over this uh, housing project. What was it in... called? Carlton? No. The... Carter. Carter. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. He takes over the, the, the Carter apartments and uh and that's when uh you know the the people get really you know that's you know people get really mad and then of course he, he uh nino brown is kind of portraying himself as this kind of like robin hood type figure where you know oh you know yeah yeah he's selling crack cocaine but you know he's he's being the homeless and he's you know right. he's giving money to people and you know right it's interesting like He's not he's not giving the community anything. He's taking from the community, but he's giving out trinkets to like make to like make people like him. Yeah, he's a bit like a warlord. Um yeah. In fact, basically is a warlord, yeah. That's a good, yeah, that's yeah. A good I hadn't thought of it that way, but you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um 
<laughs> yeah, and and so and then we get um, uh, the basically the main cop in the movie, uh, uh, Scotty. Uh, yeah, Scotty Appleton, who's played by Ice T. Um, and uh, it, we actually meet uh, him at the beginning of the movie when he busts uh, Chris Rock uh, for uh, selling drugs and trying to steal his money. Yeah, I was I was not expecting Chris Rock to be in this movie because he doesn't really appear, even though he's like a very major character. Shockingly, uh, he yeah. uh, he doesn't really appear on any of the covers and like on IMDb they don't list him as a primary actor at the top of the page. But I would argue that he's like he's probably the number four guy in this movie. Yeah. Um... Because he has a whole character arc. Because, uh, you know, like Daniel said, uh, Ice T busts him early on, even shooting him in the leg. Yeah. He shows up again as a base head as uh, they're trying to uh, get their sting going on Nino Brown. Yeah. And then you have like a very protracted scene of Ice T helping him through rehab and uh, giving up the junk. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then. Uh, so we also we got him, and then we also got uh, a couple other cops. Um, one of them is uh, oh, where, where is it? Uh, yeah, Nick Nick Peretti, who's uh, who's played by Judd Nelson. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, Judd Nelson was uh, he was a Brat Pack guy. Uh, he was in Breakfast Club. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Saying almost fire. He was also the voice of Hot Rod in the Transformers movie. Hmm. I'm going to say like, for somebody who seems to be a main character, he really doesn't make much of an impact. No, it's, it, he's mainly there just to, to get under ice T's skin. To, yeah, to give ice T someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Cause they're, they, they don't like each other very much. And the, yeah, there, there are several scenes where they almost come to blows. Um, yeah. And, um, and there's like a couple of, I think I think part of the reason they didn't feel or they felt like they had to specify no the wall wall Nito Brown story is not real it's very close to what's happening on the streets of America da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. it's because it almost does feel like it's just a like a slightly amped up documentary yeah like I I bet you that that was not intended to, to be there originally but they had enough test screenings where the audience went. Wow, yeah, I don't usually like documentaries, but that was great. Like, wait, hold up, what? Stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, is this based on a true story? <laughs> like, no, <laughs> no, it's not how it happened. <laughs> like, uh, it felt just about. It had the same sort of almost ring of truth to it that, like, say, a biography would. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, there's a few things that seem that are like giveaways, but. You know, they always make up stuff for those movies anyway, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, let's see. Um, so. Well, and uh, another cop, uh, that's, it's, um, um, his name's Stone, and he's kind of like the, the ringleader of it. And he's played by uh, Mario Van Peebles, who's the director of the movie. Yeah, and uh, I think, so directing-wise, uh, like I said, not a, not a hint of irony in this movie, at least, I took. I thought the movie took itself seriously, even for some relatively silly scenes. Yeah. Um, I, I think it also had a good directing style to it. Like it was just very blunt and on the nose, and it's just yeah. Uh, okay, so a, a while or recently, I watched a video from someone who was about twenty years younger than us, who was talking about the experience of after growing up in a bunch of Marvel movies and other things. Uh, he was watching the Lord of the Ring, the Fellowship of the Ring for the first time. And he spent like the first half hour in the Shire waiting for the joke, he, like waiting for this town to be undercut or to be shown that the town is bad somehow, or, you know, uh, like he was waiting for the subversive joke and it didn't come. And he was just kind of shocked that movies could be like that. I think wow. it could be straightforward. And I almost felt like that watching this movie. Cause it like it, yeah, like it, it just takes itself so seriously, but it's like it's melodramatic in a lot of places too. Yeah, yeah, and um, and it's it it kind of has um, it it has that 
early '90s kind of gritty vibe to it. Um, it, 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 it that that that's '90s style that um, is kind of very evident in movies of the period. Yeah, and it's just it's it's a very unique watching experience. Yeah. I guess the question is, uh, how much do we want to spoil this movie and how much are we trying to point people to watching it? Because there's more we could go into with some more heavy spoilers, but yeah. I don't necessarily know that I want to completely ruin it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of with you there because um, I, I do think it is, um, it's it's not perfect, but it's definitely, I, I think, worth a watch. Um yeah, it, it feels unique to me. Maybe that's yeah. just because I haven't seen enough of this particular subgenre of action movie. But uh, it, it, it you know, we, I was saying earlier that you know, Furiosa, I'm going to remember Chris Hemsworth's performance and then slowly forget about it. I think this one's going to stick with me a while longer. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I, I mean, especially with Wesley Snipes' character, like you know, his, like. He's definitely has that. Um, it, it, it was, it's funny that they there are a couple of scenes in the movie where he his character is watching Scarface. Yes, like that. That was one of those like on the nose things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely getting that feeling from him. Yeah, and I and I, I thought they did a really good job of um, portraying just how evil he is. Right. Yeah. Just does not care about anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's one scene in particular where that's very evident. <laughs> yes, um, I would say second most interesting performance in the movie was actually Chris Rock, mm -hmm. um, and this was like I was just shocked to see him in it at all. And then I was shocked to see it with him in there for an extended period of time without him getting all jokey. Yeah, um, and, and I, I want to say this was right around the time he was on Saturday Night Live. I, I looked it up. I think he this. I think this movie came out in ninety one, and he started in ninety. Okay, yeah. So he'd been with it for a bit. Yeah, and, and well, that makes sense because they both of those you know, productions were in New York. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, and I normally don't see him in dramatic roles. Yeah, <laughs> no, and like he he goes through this whole positive and negative character arc. It's, it's just very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely not like his character in Lethal Weapon Four. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I would actually say one of the the weaker performances in this movie, probably Ice T himself, just mm -hmm. because he's playing a very straight cop, like very I should say not straight cop. He's like a very um, he's a street level cop who's just kind of very rough with everybody. Yeah, doesn't have yeah. a lot of depth to him. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I would kind of agree with that too. Yeah, he, um, not the, he's not the best actor, although, although I, I think, um, I, I remember seeing him on, on Law and Order SVU, and he was, you know, decent on that show. He's probably improved over time. I, I wonder if this was one of his first. Probably, if, yeah. if not his first. Let, let's find out. And IMDb is having trouble today. Every time I move to a page, I have to. It says. Uh, you know, can't load t content at this time, and then it gets fixed when I, re I refresh it. Uh -huh. All right, so... Let's see. Uh, 2002, 2090, 90. Okay, uh, so I, I had forgotten just how much stuff he's been in. Uh, he was he was in a couple of... Um, I, actually, no, I think this was his first, like, actual acting role. Yeah. Yeah, because he was in... He was in a, okay, he was in a TV show called Fame as an uncredited character who was an enforcer. Yeah. And he was in a couple of things as you know, he was in Break and Two Electric Boogaloo. How can you say this was his first real movie? Oh, well, movie yeah. oh, and, he, and he was in and he was in Break and he was in the first Break and okay. Yeah. And, and rapping. Oh yeah. <laughs> as I see. Okay, yeah. but yeah, no, this is like his first movie where it's like an actual stretching of his acting ability. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but uh but yeah, I mean I, I think um yeah, I, 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 although I will say some of the negatives I had, um, did it did it kind of feel like there were certain scenes that like we were kind of jumping in the middle of them? Yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, yeah. that, that. Maybe that's part of why it, it kind of has that um, based on a true story vibe, where it's like the the writer is going, "Well, we gotta, yeah, we can't just." Or we, we got to have, I don't know, um, we got to have this scene where 
Josephine and Robespierre talk about this or else this later scene won't make sense. But we haven't introduced who Robespierre is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the audience can read a history book if they want to. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, uh, and there and there was also another like scene in there where um I, I don't a light spoiler like where Ice T and Judd Nelson are they're on the roof talking to each other and they're having a drink. And like Ice T has like this black smudge on his forehead and then like Judd Nelson has a smudge on the side of his face. I'm hmm. kind of like like had they just been in a fight or something? Yeah. yeah, that was my thought. I'm like, well, were they like fighting each other before? And because I mean, like I like because like I said, like throughout the movie, the, those two guys like come, uh, they almost come to blows in almost every scene they're in together. And I, I wonder if maybe there wasn't like a like a fight scene in there. And then when they were done fighting, they're like, all right, let's just all right, we we punch it out. out. Let's just actually work together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, speaking of Scarface, uh, Ice T did a voice in the Scarface: The World Is Yours video game from 2006. <laughs> the uh, as the creatively named John Johnson. Uh. <laughs> well. Oh, and he was in Gears of War three. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, like, it's not perfect. It's just it has a very unique flavor to this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's one thing that Tiffany Henyard gave the world that was positive was I think she pointed more people at this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, like we said, yeah, I, I think it's worth a watch. It's, you know, like we said, it's on Paramount Plus. So yeah. well, one of the cheaper uh, streaming services to get a month of, and they would love to have you <laughs> as bad <laughs> as things are. Yes, because uh, I don't, you know, don't know how much longer that streaming service is going to be around for. I don't know how much long, longer Paramount is going to be around for at this rate. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, well, I okay. Well, I, I think we've uh, exhausted all of our indeed for the nights. 